Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We'll give it just a moment for more students to log on, but thank you so much for joining us today. I'll give it a couple minutes. All right, I'm starting to see the numbers trickle in. They're slowing down a bit, but I'll give it maybe one more minute for students to continue logging on, but thanks for joining us. Um, we're excited to have y'all. All right, I think we can go ahead and start. We have a good amount of people here. Thanks for spending some of your Monday with us learning about the Wellness Center at Duke. So my name is Kira. I am an intern at our Student Wellness Center and I'm joined by two other Wellness Center interns, Alice and David. Um, so we're gonna be sharing a little bit about the student experience of the Wellness Center and kind of what students have available to them as resources from the Wellness Center. A quick overview of your, your Zoom kind of screen. Um, we have a Q&A function on the bottom, and then there's a chat function on the bottom. So if you are asking a question that you would like answered by anyone on the Zoom today, go ahead and put it in Q&A for me. That way everyone can see all of the questions and we can see them and then we can answer them. Um, in instead of the chat. The chat we just can't really see as well. So questions in the Q&A. That being said, I would like everyone on our Zoom call today to introduce themselves. So I am going to pass it off um, for everyone to run down some introductions so you guys know who is talking to you today. Hey Kira, right quick, um, can we let um, Milan just step in and do quick introductions for admissions? Yeah, of course. So. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks, Kira. Before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping notes that um, we want to share. Um, hi, everyone. Again, my name is Milan Hamilton. Um, I'm an admissions officer here at Duke. I'm also a Duke alum and really excited to have um, wellness here at Duke, be able to explain some things that they have and opportunities that they have for you all today. But a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, first is that Duke encourages persons with disabilities to participate in all of its programs and activities. If you'd like to request accommodation services for an information session um, or any of our services, please contact Idella Hackett at I-D-E-L-L-A dot H-A-C-K-E-T-T -T at duke dot edu or at 919-684-0186 to arrange these for a later date. Um, in addition to that, this session is being recorded, so it's going to be available on the Duke Admissions YouTube channel. So if you miss anything or if you have to run early, we'll have this information available to you on demand um, via YouTube. So with that, today's program is going to be a little bit about wellness at Duke. I will pass it back off to their team to explain anything. We'll be behind the scenes in the Q&A chat as well in case you have any questions kind of regarding admission side of things or if we can help in any way. Um, but other than that, that's all I have for you all today, and I'll pass it right back over to them. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so again, I'm Kira, one of our wellness interns today. We're going to take you through a little slideshow on the Student Wellness Center and everything that it has to offer. Um, I'm going to ask Alice and David to give a little, a little hi and a little introduction so you guys can meet, meet kind of all of us before we get started. Sure, I'll start us off. So my name is Alice. I'm a senior here at Duke majoring in global health and public policy. And this is my second year with the DWELL team. Excited to be here. 
Nice. Hi, my name is David. I'm a freshman um, and I'm undeclared currently, but I'm thinking of majoring in biomedical engineering. And this is my first year, of course, being a freshman with you well, and I'm really happy to be here. Awesome. Thanks. So again, as a reminder, questions for admissions and or the wellness staff go in the Q&A on your Zoom. But I want to start us off with a little icebreaker, fun, get to know each other question. So Alice and David know this very well because it's my absolute favorite icebreaker. But I want to know if you guys have a food hot take or like a weird food combination that you really love to eat. I, every single time I ask this, it yield such surprising answers, but I, I love seeing what other people like, um, combined together. I've tried a couple of them. They're pretty good. I learned about salted watermelon on one of these, and now I love eating my watermelon with salt. My personal food hot take is that I love peanut butter on my hamburgers. I always eat hamburgers with peanut butter, sriracha, bacon, and cheddar cheese. That's like my my ideal um, burger, but I would love for everyone to drop their food hot take in the chat. David, Alice, if you want to share yours. All right. And I'll make a note on this slide as well that you're looking at. Um, our Instagram handle is there. If you want to follow us, stay up to date with everything um, we're doing, we post on there about different sort of highlights. Um, and you'll notice on this slide, we have that tree logo. So that is our do well logo. It's blown up on the next slide for you. And it really just is what we believe an all encompassing picture of holistic wellness. So at the bottom of the tree, we have the foundation of it. And that is your identity, your value and your choices. And we just believe that that really is like the root of your personal wellness tree. And then you can see the trunk sustaining the whole tree is self-care. And we think that self-care is necessary and it helps your tree grow strong and big and supports all of our other dimensions of wellness, which you see as the branches of the tree. So financial, intellectual, environmental, mind, body, social, and spiritual wellness are all encompass in do well and our programming. So you'll notice those peppered throughout everything else that we do. So the next slide, we have a picture of the wellness center building, the building that we've been talking about so long. So you can see that it is absolutely gorgeous with what you'll, you'll come to know as one of the best views of the chapel as well with the natural light, because you can see the building is almost all windows. And so the building is relatively new. It was built in 2017. And it is a one-stop shop, everything student wellness. So you really never have a question of where you need to go if you need any sort of wellness or healthcare. It is in this building. So everything from nutrition services to student health, and there's a pharmacy. We also have a meditation garden and our oasis spaces, which you'll learn more about. And so there really are just all all things that you could possibly need are in this building right in one place. So it's really, really convenient for students. And on the next slide, we have some pictures of some of my favorite places on campus in general, and they are in the Wellness Center. Um, so we have some really awesome study spots, both for solo studying, for group studying, really peaceful um, environment. We also have a piano and the building has really incredible acoustics. And when students are playing the piano, it is some of my favorite times. I love just sitting there and listening to like the my talented peers. Um, the, the piano also plays itself, fun fact. So you don't have to be too talented to play this piano, but I love, I love when I hear students practicing um, their pieces. And then the next slide are just some more pictures of awesome spaces around the wellness center. The egg chairs are definitely a student favorite. Those are hanging in the meditation garden. That's the other picture on the slide. Um, and today, I mean, we're having beautiful Durham weather. So there's nothing better than just sitting out there with an awesome, awesome view and enjoying the wellness center. So it was a little intro to the entire building. And now I'll pass it off to David, who's going to tell you about specific Oasis spaces that we have. Nice. Thank you so much, Kira, for the introduction. And one of the great spaces that the Wellness Center offers to students both on East Campus and West Campus are the Oasis spaces. And essentially, within the Wellness Center, there's a space for students to be able to relax, recharge, and 
re-energize and recharge as the image states, but also whether it be spending time studying with one another, relaxing, or just at the end of the day, having a space um, just to take it all in and focus and be mindful of their day and their situations and their surroundings. The Oasis spaces are great places to do that. So in both the Oasis spaces, well, in both the Oasis spaces, they have um, activities such as make your own aromatherapy sprays with recipes included for students who want that and the essential oils provided, which is really popular among students. Um, also things like Tibetan singing bowls, Chinese bowing balls, um, healing crystals and whatnot. And a, a really big favorite among the student bodies is the massage chairs. West Campus, Oasis West, excuse me, has three massage chairs while Oasis East has one massage chair. But students on both campuses love to enter and just be able to relax and unwind. And another big thing that students are able to enjoy in the Oasis West space is the newly um, added TheraBody sound chairs, which is essentially use like sound and vibration technology in order to create like a calming experience for students. And basically, so students are able to plug in their phones and play either a preset song that they have a list that they can scan from or that they can provide their own song. And essentially, the TheraBody chair will vibrate to this beat and sound and rhythm of that song. So it creates a calming experience for students um, or even faculty and staff to be able to relax and unwind at the end of the day. Thanks, David, for sharing about the Oasis space. We're going to now transition over to talk a little bit more about the programming that Duwell offers. Um, the Duke Wellness Center has three areas of programming, first being wellness promotion, the second being alcohol and other drug resources, and third being sexual health and healthy relationships programming. Uh, we're going to dive a little bit more deeper into wellness promotion. And we wanted to share with you that our wellness programming is designed to offer students ways to manage their stress through self-care, finding time throughout the day to take a minute to relax and to really focus on their physical and emotional health, find a happy place through using positive self-talk, and just being present in the moment, whether that's in our physical space or whether that's through programming. Kira is now going to share a little bit more about our wellness promotion activities called Moments of Mindfulness. Yeah, so I'll briefly talk about my own moments of mindfulness. I actually, I'm going to pass you off to David first, who's going to give a little background to all of the moments of mindfulness, and then I can share about my individual event every week. Nice, thank you. Um, so essentially, the moments of mindfulness are one of the types of dual programming that are largely student run and give students the ability to participate and create programs and events that they enjoy and share that and create community with other students. So it allows students to have hands on experiences through managing stress levels and building community with one another. And the next slide will propose some examples of moments of mindfulness that students are able to propose. Um, this is an example of a schedule for fall 2022, and because the schedule differs based on semesters, um, it shows that students are able to create different moments of mindfulnesses, or if they want to take on more of a leadership role on different ones, um, they sometimes have the ability to do that and alter the schedule depending on the semester. Um, so one, one of the big reasons for the moments of mindfulness is, was just a way that students are able to relax and make an easy space that students don't have to feel like they're being assessed or whatnot. It's, they are relatively easy, it's easy to attend. Students are able to sign up on Duke groups, which is basically Duke's like, um, event organizing, um, software, um, but they don't necessarily have to. Um, they happen weekly with no fee, um, and basically it's just all for students to be able to relax and not feel like they have an assessment or whatnot. Um, and again, they form as a, a form. They serve as a form of empowerment for students to present any activities and ideas that they want at new programs. Um, for example, students can do like drum circles, paint nights, and Kira will talk about her personal moments in mindfulness too. Oh, thanks for the background. So I will note that these change. So this is not the moments of mindfulness for this upcoming year. So I wouldn't like screenshot this and think the schedule is changing because we do have students um, who create new ones every single semester and every year, and they're always changing. So there's really always something new. There's a couple of new ones in the works that are really exciting. I know there's a gardening one that's 
that's coming up, a dance. I believe Bollywood dancing is coming next year potentially. So a lot of fun things. It You don't have to work at the wellness center or be a do well intern in order to start a moments of mindfulness. It's students who have some sort of passion that they want to share with, with the rest um, of the student body. So for example, I, a big part of my personal wellness is doing creative things and I need to have some time set aside to create something with my hands and just be creative without worrying about like being productive per se. So I started a crafting moments of mindfulness and once a week I get together, I have regulars who come every week. So now we've become friends, they become friends with each other and we sit in the room, listen to music, craft together. And then at the end we get to take home, like whether we made a tote bag or painted a canvas, we have, we have something to remind us um, to take a break and, and decompress sometimes. So that's my personal moments of mindfulness experience. And now I will send you back to Alice for some alcohol and drug resources. Yes, uh, Moments of Mindfulness is a great way to engage your wellness on a weekly basis, so highly encourage those activities. Um, the, Do well, the Duke Student Wellness Center uh, has programming specifically related to alcohol and drug resources, um, and it spans different programming, including social host training, um, which is a program that was developed in order to have students be accountable uh, to one another at social events. Um, student organizations are required to have social hosts to ensure safety of their peers. And that's one way that Duke Wellness helps promote alcohol safety at social events. We also have this concept of ride the wave that we in our programmers uh, created, which is an alcohol education technique uh, to make sure that students do not um, go overboard in terms of um, their alcohol drinking. We also do various types of screenings and surveys, um, including BASICS, which stands for Brief Alcohol Screening and Intervention of College Students, uh, which is a harm reduction intervention for college students to become more conscientious and more aware of their alcohol and drug usage. And that is also helped and complemented by a first year survey um, and a wellness at Duke module that is a mandatory training that is done for first year students as you all enter in. Uh, that is facilitated by Duke Wellness. And in the case of extreme cases or situations where students need further support, we will refer them out and connect them to Student Health, which is also located in the Health Center. Awesome, thanks. So we also have a lot of sexual health and healthy relationship um, different resources for students to use in these areas. So our first, we have our safer sex kits. So students can go online and fill out a form requesting any sort of safer sex supplies. So condoms, lube, dental dams, female condoms, and they get packaged up with like your student ID, which is like a random letter. Of, well, it's not random, but some letters and numbers and they get put in the Oasis space and you just go, you pick it up. You don't have to talk to anyone or, or let anyone know that that's what, that's what you're there for. So we have those available to all students. We also have monthly confidential STI testing in the wellness center. Um, so that's a great resource for students to go and practice sexual health by getting STI tested once a month. And we also have healthy relationship seminars, which help teach you, you know, red flags and green flags in relationships, all relationships, friendships, personal relationships, even professional relationships. And so those are really educational for, for students and really, really beneficial um, for everyone here on campus. So that was a little rundown of the different things offered by Duwell. And now I'm going to pass you off for some information on Duke Reach. Hello everyone. My name is Tierra Wade and I'm the Associate Director for Duke Reach. Um, and Duke Reach offers case management services to students and the field of higher ed case management has been around for a while now. It started back in about 2007 as a response to the shooting at Virginia Tech, because um, it seemed like during that time, there's a lot of different entities on campus that had information about the student, but they weren't sharing that information. Um, 
Our main goal in our office is to, of course, provide support to students who are experiencing issues with their academics, their health, or any other like personal obstacles, things like uh, maybe changes in their finances or um, their mental health or any of those other kind of things. And so we don't provide uh, therapy or like counseling services. Again, like the counseling center is going to speak, you know, right after I do. And so you'll learn more about what they offer. But for us, we kind of we refer students to resources. So um, things that students might be needing assistance with. And of course, Duke is a big place and a lot of different services are offered. And sometimes it can be hard to navigate those things if you aren't feeling your best or you're just kind of confused on where to start. So our office is usually a good place to get started. Um, and again, we connect students with all areas of wellness and we can refer them to you know, things both on and off campus, kind of depending on what their needs are. Um, we provide services to both undergraduate and graduate students. And we, are, we provide non-confidential, non-clinical case management. And by non-confidential, it doesn't mean that, you know, I'm going to go make a billboard with all of your business on it after, you know, we have a conversation. But, you know, we have the ability to be able to kind of communicate, you know, to different resources on campus and different campus offices and collaborate in order to kind of provide like the best uh, services possible for students. Um, and of course, there isn't a fee for our services. Um, you can meet with us either virtually or in person. We have an office on East Campus in the Kroll Building on the third floor. We also have space on West Campus in the Wellness Building, just kind of depending on what's easier for students. Um, we also will work with students who have things such as like, say, like a temporary disability. So maybe you got an injury and so you're needing accommodations for your classes or maybe even accommodations with getting around campus. Um, students might be struggling with their academics. Um, and anyone can let our office know when they have a concern. So we, we get reports, either students can self-report if they already know that they're struggling and they need extra help, or if a uh, family or parents are concerned about their student, we also can get reports from, you know, professors, um, other staff members, and people use what's called our care report. And you can reach that um, on the student affairs website when you go look for Duke Reach. And again, like you don't have to have a, a Duke affiliation in order to fill that report out. Um, the report can be confidential. However, just depending on what kind of information is shared, um, the person, you know, might kind of figure out who has a concern. But again, like it's okay to be concerned about somebody. That's nothing to be ashamed about or if like the student is going to get in trouble. Again, like we're there to offer resources and help the student be as successful as they can at Duke. And it's not punitive or something that they're going to get in trouble for because, you know, Duke Reach is reaching out to them to offer support. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Ty Luador. I am the Assistant Director for Communication and Outreach um, here at CAPS at Duke, and I am also a marriage and family therapist in CAPS. So CAPS here offers free confidential counseling. And so the way I like to sum it up is, the same type of counseling and or therapy that you see on TV with your stars, like we do all of that. And I always joke that we're just licensed to do it. Um, and so students can walk in um, at any time. No, let me correct that. Anytime during our set hours. And so right now we're working a schedule on Monday and Wednesday through Friday of 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. as well as uh, on Tuesdays, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m any students can walk in, they're going to meet with a counselor. It may take about 30 minutes. So we ask for students to set aside a little bit of time. But on that day that they walk in, they'll meet with a counselor on our track team who can do an assessment, see if students in crisis, and also begin to talk with the student on the types of resources and or services they may need. Services that we offer are individual counseling. Um, we do group counseling. We also handle referrals. Our services can be done in person uh, over the phone or via Zoom. Um, we also offer psychiatric um, appointments. Those for the most part are done in person, um, but they can work it out so that if the student needed to be virtual, it can happen that way as well. Um, we can go to the next one. Thank you. Um, House and CAPS though is our gender violence intervention coordinator. And so this is fairly new for us. Uh, we have the GBI offices and the coordinator in our office is someone that students can make reports to. She has a 24 seven monitor line. She can walk, students can walk in, meet with her that way or they can call an email. Uh, so I think I said the support services are free. So students 
do not have to worry about using any type of insurance when they're with us in counseling services, uh, just because this is already included into their health fee and such. So we're here, thanks. All right, so we just discussed and went over a wide range of programming and services that are offered at the Student Wellness Center. This is a slide to kind of categorize and simplify where and which departments um, those programs are in. So Duke Wellness, Duke Reach, and CAPS um, are all kind of separate entities, but we all work together in a team to help promote student wellness um, at the Student Wellness Center. Um, on top of that, we have other resources in the building, which we've mentioned before, including nutrition and dietary services, the pharmacy, student health, physical therapy, and also dental services. And so all of these entities make up the Student Wellness Center. And one other comment that we wanted to highlight was that the building itself is three floors and the building and the layout of all of these services within the building uh, was very intentional. And so as you go up the floor, the idea is that you are seeking kind of further levels of assistance. So the first floor is really centered on the programming that is built to help prevent stress and to prevent any negative health or wellness related outcomes. Um, there is where you'll find the meditation garden, you'll find the oasis space, all of our moments of mindfulness are all facilitated on the first floor um, and a lot of our staff members are housed on the first floor. Um, as you go up the levels, the second floor is mainly student health where if you do fall sick or need further medical assistance, you would go to the second floor. And then on the third floor, we have CAPS, um, counseling and psychological services as well as physical therapy and other kind of additional health related services in the building. Nice. Thank you so much, Alice. Transitioning more onto, I guess, the end of programming wise. Um, I'm about to talk a bit about the Project Wellness Freshman Orientation Program. And just for context, I don't know how much you guys all know about the way Duke does orientation. But recently, I believe last year, well, my first year uh, was the first year they initiated this. But Duke has started to use an experiential orientation program system in which there are 21 or so different projects that students can choose from and participate in. Um, they're about a week long that they can participate with um, their peers as they're entering campus, just as a way that students can relax and be able to know people they're around and form friendships before they have classes, assignments, and things such as that. Um, so regarding the Project Wellness Freshman Orientation, um, it's an exciting orientation week program focused on wellness. Um, so by the end of the week that you go through the orientation program, we're hoping that you're able to gain new perception of wellness and able to apply those things that you've learned to your normal college and academic career, whether it be um, learning more about painting services that do well, or even like the arts annex offers, or even whether it be like learning about drum circles and saying, hey, I'm interested, maybe I want to join that moment of mindfulness, or even whether it just be being more accustomed to the Duke Gardens and whatnot. Um, beyond that, uh, within Project Wellness, uh, we focus on things outside of Duke and the Duke bubble, so to speak, um, whether it be going into Durham and doing food tours and whatnot, just getting in, into the community and seeing more of the Durham community. Um, so we hope that you're able to put Project Wellness as one of the top choices. I'm happy because I'm going to be one of the orientation leaders this year. Um, so please feel free to ask questions in the chat about it if I didn't hit too much about it. But yeah, thanks. Awesome. Thanks so much. So now we're going to transition into a kind of Q&A with um, our students here on the panel so you guys can hear about our experiences every day with the Wellness Center. Um, so we have a question in the chat about, is the Wellness Center open on weekends? And if you're coming for Blue Devil Days, can you visit? And my answer is absolutely. 
please do. The Wellness Center is open on weekends. Students are in the Wellness Center studying in the massage chairs, hanging out all weekend. And Blue Devil Days, we most certainly will be open and would love for you to stop by and come see our spaces. I personally will be all very much involved in Blue Devil Days. I'm, I'm a tour guide and admissions ambassador. So if you see me out there, say hi and say that you, you were on this webinar with me. Um, so please do come, come stop by. So I, um, I'm going to ask some questions to Alice and David, and we're all going to answer them. So my first one is how you discovered Do Well and their programming. And I'm going to ask for David to answer first. Okay, nice. Um, so as a freshman, I'll say that I had a bit of external help um, from my brother. So my brother graduated class of 2020, and he really told me about the Wellness Center because that was a really big space for him um, and the Wellness Center programming when he was here. So that's how I first um, heard about it. But honestly, just going by and going through West Campus was how I really got accustomed to the Wellness Center, and especially the Oasis spaces and moments of mindfulness and whatnot has become one of my favorite parts about the Wellness Center. Um, yeah. And was there another part to the question? Sorry. No, just how you discovered, okay. how you discovered do well. Um, now, since I'm speaking again, I'll just give my little blurb before Alice shares. I discovered do well my freshman year as well, as well, of course. And it was actually when my dorm had an event where a wellness center representative came and talked to us about wellness. And it was a lot of fun. So I was there with all my dorm friends and then we all, um, went to the wellness center like a couple of days later to check it out and see what it was about. Sat in the garden that you like see this slide is a picture of the meditation garden. And yeah, then that was, that was history. Then I was in the wellness center. I would go to lab, like lab class with my roommate slash lab partner. And our tradition was we would go to chem lab and then we would hit up the massage chairs in the wellness center and just just sit there for a second, decompressing after so many hours on our feet. Um, but that was really like my introduction. Um, I'll hop in to share my story. I first interacted with the Wellness Center during Blue Devil Days. And coming from California, it was a huge coast to coast transition. Um, and given just some personal priorities and experiences, I wanted to make sure that I knew about all of the wellness and health related resources that were here on campus. And so we made it a, or my parents and I made it a priority to make sure that we knew uh, what was going on at the Wellness Center and ways that I could engage in my physical as well as the other dimensions of wellness during my four years here at Duke. So um, made it a priority then. And then I was really intrigued by uh, during orientation week, the wellness center hosted a series of like workshops. And uh, one of the staff members had presented like a skit regarding like um, alcohol safety and things like that. And so I went into the wellness center, discovered the massage chairs and all that the student wellness center had to offer. And so that was kind of my first experiences with the wellness center. Thanks for sharing. So today we've talked about some so many different programming options hosted by the Wellness Center. And so I'm curious to know what Alice and David's favorite like Wellness Center programming or event is. I will will share my two cents first. So I have I have two kind of answers. So sorry about that. But my first one is in general our orientation program that David discussed. I was the leader, well, one of the leaders of orientation this past year, and it truly was so much fun. I loved being able to welcome all the new freshmen to campus and watching them become friends with each other and kind of get their footing at the school over those six days um, was really rewarding. And they, they had a lot of fun. And now every time I see them on campus, I just saw a whole group of them actually in the wellness center too. I ran into some of them today. And it's always nice to see them in groups and know that, that they found their friends. So early on. Um, and then one of my other favorite programming events was actually last year, the wellness center brought in glass blowing like experts and they set up in the meditation garden. And I went with all of my friends one, one day and we learned how to make a little glass blown. I actually have it. I have it on my desk. We learned how to make a little glass blown owl. So now I have my own 
little owl and me and my friends all have them and we made them at the wellness center. So that, that was one of my favorites as well. Um, so yeah, if Alice, if you want to share yours. Yes, I also have two. <laughs> so the first one I'll say is uh, it's like a one-time event that we host, but the Wellness Center Open House is a really big open to the public event. Um, we open up all three floors of the Wellness Center. We um, have representatives from each of our services come in to talk to students about the services that they offer. And there's free food and snacks. They gave out succulents. Um, and so it was just a really fun way to engage with the community and to share about all of the cool programs that we host. Um, and then the second thing is a moment of mindfulness. Um, I really enjoy doing paint night. I went a few times with some friends. I think the moments of mindfulness is very accessible to students uh, because they're hosted on a weekly basis and they're all walk-in. So whenever you're feeling particularly stressed or just want to engage in those activities in a certain way. Um, all the materials are provided and free. Um, you're in community with peers who are experiencing similar feelings during, for example, midterm season or final season. And you just get to be in the moment with and in community with peers. So paint night is always great. So there's also a question of if the wellness center ever partners with other campus organizations and the answer is absolutely yes we do it all the time um both like individuals and groups will reach out to the wellness center looking for kind of a joint event i know um like alice was just discussing paint night sometimes clubs will want to come to paint night as like a whole club and make it like a little event for them and we love doing that we love partnering with other campus organizations um so we'll do joint ones like that all the time. Um, and any group on campus or club can, can reach out and set up a wellness event. We also will go into like dorms if an RA wants to give their residents some wellness knowledge or even just show them how to use everything in the, um, in the Oasis. We do that a lot. I have led a bunch of those and it's so much fun to go and do these events with different clubs and stuff. Um, so that's, that's really awesome and totally something that is available. Um, so I have another question for Alice and David about if there is a wellness kind of hidden gem or something in the wellness center or related to wellness at Duke that you think is like, your favorite and it's it's your your little hidden hidden gem sorry if i'm making you now now share like your favorite your favorite spot if it's going to be taken but alice and i are graduating i i think i can share on this um i would probably say just the wellness center in general as a place to study because so many of my friends who i'm saying i'm going to study or when they say they're going to going to study they'll be saying like oh i'm going to perkins bostock those are libraries if you don't know um or lily library on east campus uh, which are great places i love studying especially at perkins but the wellness center especially on the third floor has a beautiful view of the chapel and they have like these i don't even know how to, to call them but like there are these chairs that are like privacy seating that you can just sit there and do work in front of the chapel view and be able to relax um, and if you want to take a little nap, which sometimes I do, nobody can really see you doing that either. So that would probably be my favorite spot, whether it's studying with friends or by myself. I think the Oasis is, everyone knows about it, but it is a little underrated. I think a lot more students could make use of the space. The massage chairs are probably my, my go-to spot. Yeah, thanks. You can tell that there are so many different ways to utilize the wellness center, whether you're napping, studying in the massage chair, maybe doing them all, all at once. Um, so thanks, Alice and David for sharing that. So in the in the Q&A, there's a question about Greek life on Duke's campus and issues with hazing and or drinking, etc. Um, 
So I will preface this with, I am now a senior and I am not in Greek life. And I think a lot of things have probably changed in my four years here. So I don't, I don't really know what your experience would be if you were to come here next year um, and get involved in Greek life. I can't tell you exactly what that would be like. I can tell you that in general on campus, at least my experience is that it, the social scene's kind of what, what you make of it. If like we do, we do have Greek life. I should have started with that. Um, we do have Greek organizations. And if you come to campus wanting that to be your whole social life, you've just always really wanted to do that. You can totally do that and you'll find the people who are doing that as well. And if you wanna to come to campus and stay as far away from that as you can, and you know you are not gonna be in Greek life, you don't want to, that's also totally okay. And you will find the people who are also doing that. There are people on all points in that spectrum. And I promise you'll find you'll find those, those people who, um, who are going to have those same kind of views as you. And in terms of hazing, and I think this question is probably stemming from our alcohol and drug resources. So all, um, all organizations that will be hosting parties, such as Greek organizations, also other ones, um, will go through training and social host training. And there will be social hosts, sober social hosts at all of their events. And you have to have a certain number of social hosts, like depending on the person. Um, it's something like one social host to 20 or 25 um, people there. So they are, and social hosts are trained in um, alcohol and drug like safety. And also then like, first response and what to do if something goes wrong. So we do um, have those like safety resources in place for students. And as well, any organization, any Greek life organization or otherwise um, can reach out to the wellness center and have programming like for them, like have a meeting with everyone. Um, and we, we share all of those resources. So I know that wasn't a super complete and great answer to your question. I, I don't really know what your experience with Greek life would be exactly to, to help you. Um, but if I didn't answer all of it, feel free to ask a follow-up question um, in the chat. I also see another question in our Q&A. I love, keep them coming because I just want to give you all the info you're looking for. Um, so it's asking if Dewell mainly provides student-run self-care classes for other students. Um, and so we do provide student run self care classes for other students, but they're not all entirely student run in terms of like the wellness center also encompasses like student health that is obviously not like student run and then we have a lot of mental health resources that are professionally run and it's not all student run mental health resources, we do have both forms because students have different levels of comfort. Um, and different levels of needs for mental health care. So there are like peer support lines if you want to really just talk to someone kind of your own age and have like one sort of conversation or there are, you know, our professionals in, in CAPS as well. So it is, it is a mix, um, but most of our programming is student run, like the moments of mindfulness and different things like that. Um, at Duke in general, we have a lot of student run things because then everyone enjoys them and students know what other students want and need. So that's that's really awesome. Um, I think for now, those were our questions in, oh, yeah. questions just came in. Once I said it, you guys were like, gotta get my questions in. Um, so I'm going to throw a question at Alice about your opinion on mental health of students at Duke? Like are most students really stressed out because as you guys are imagining at home, like Duke classes are sometimes a lot. Do you think all students are stressed? And then the culture around mental health, like do we talk about it um, and different things like that? Yeah, this is a really great question. Something that I was also wondering coming um, to Duke. I think in general, um, conversations around mental health are pretty common, at least um, within the communities that I've been in. Um, I've been really blessed to be in community with people who openly support one another and are open to having conversations about mental health. Um, there are a lot of resources on campus that help facilitate this type of culture. Um, there are like anonymous peer support 
um, helplines, there are, you know, just events and spaces that people hold specifically to hold those types of conversations. Um, I think in general, uh, students here are really happy and they love Duke. Um, we're all here because we love it. We, I mean, Kira and I clearly have stayed here for all four years um, and we love it here. Um, it's really about taking that initiative and seeking resources when you need it. Um, students are very collaborative in classes. I think that's one thing that Duke is really um, strongly advocating for. Um, students help each other work together all the time on projects and on problem sets and homework and things like that. Um, so yes, you'll definitely find community and it's very important that um, we do destigmatize conversations about mental health and I think do well is a great place to start. Um, and so I would second that. I do think that it is important for folks to remember, and I can't remember if it's just students, incoming students and parents too, right? That as, as students are transitioning into college, they're also transitioning into a different stage of their life as well. So there are some stressors that are going to come with that. So not only is your student trying to balance coursework, um, making new friends, because that, that's different too, when all of your all of your friends are K through 12 and they may not have come to the same institution as you. Um, those types of things come into play, learning how to balance bills and all of that. So they're trying to manage school, but now they're also trying to figure out what it is to be an adult too. So there are some stressors involved, but there are resources there for that too. We have the, the first step, that social piece. So sometimes it's peer connection that's needed. Sometimes it takes for students to hear the experiences of others, um, to feel empowered, to be able to overcome certain things. Um, at that next level, there's us, right? And so any of the mental health uh, services on campus, if students are concerned about another student, they can go through to reach and file a report um, and the appropriate offices will reach out. And so we have something, we, we pretty much have something that can help, but I do think it is important for us to understand that sometimes anxiety and, and anxiety and stress are normal and, and a bit of it is actually normative for this process. When we're doing something new, we're learning something new. Um, some of it, it is normative, but we are there to help when uh, the discomfort gets to be a bit too much. Thank you so much for answering that question. We have a question in the chat about physical fitness classes and our are things like that offered through Do Well and in general, like Duke resources for things like that, because that is a big part of wellness for a lot of students here. So I'm gonna have David tell you a little bit about that. Nice, thank you. Um, so fitness class wise through Do Well itself, not too many physical fitness classes. Um, we do offer yoga um, for students, which is one of the biggest ways that I guess I would say physical fitness um, on behalf of Do Well, but beyond that, um, through our gyms, Wilson and Wilson on West and Brody on East, fitness classes are offered for students at any time. I believe there are some classes that you can actually sign up for as a course, and other classes you can just sign up for casually, just wanting to attend. Uh, beyond that, they have activities like um, rock climbing walls and things like that. So there definitely are other fitness activities available to students, but not necessarily specifically through Do Well. Um, and I guess one thing that another question that was in the chat um, was regarding whether student um, whether well, resources that do well are used by students often. I would say definitely, whether it be student health, CAPS, Duke Reach, whatnot, um, they're definitely all used by students at different capacities at different times of years. But students definitely are able to access them. And I think it's also a great experience when students enter the Wellness Center for the first time. They're like, oh my gosh, this place is amazing. And it's just a great place for students to come back to and feel grounded and just feel supported with whatever needs they have transitioning into campus or during their college career. Thanks, David. So that is all the questions that were submitted already. So thank you for asking those questions. Um, that was really awesome. And now we're gonna lead you through a guided meditation. And so you can experience that. We do guided meditations at, at Do Well pretty frequently and I love them. So I hope, I hope you enjoy it. Yes, and so I'm gonna lead you through a quick guided meditation. It's only gonna take a few minutes and it's okay. You don't have to be an expert 
in meditation in order to do this is okay for beginners. I also just want to explain that, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to stop your mind. Um, this isn't going to be like a magical, mystical kind of experience. You're not going to solve all life's problems, just a few moments of silence. There's really no right or wrong way to practice today. It's really just an opportunity to kind of sit and breathe. And again, but, you know, not to really expect nothing from this other than just a chance to kind of sit, relax, and breathe. Um, something else I just wanted to point out too, there's going to be um, just a few seconds of silence in between props. It doesn't mean that I suddenly put myself on mute by mistake or disconnected the call, like just kind of have that moment of silence in order to kind of regulate your breathing and to sit and relax. So it's normal to kind of have those stops um, in between when I'm giving different props. And, you know, posture is important. Just make sure you're comfortable. Um, it's helpful if you're seated in a chair. You want to have your feet flat on the ground. You want to have your hands either on your lap or relax at your sides. Um, relax your shoulders. It's okay if you want to close your eyes or even keep them open. Um, breathing, you can breathe through your nose or your mouth, um, just whatever is most comfortable for you. Because right now, again, it's whatever, however you breathe comfortably. Okay, so start off with closing your eyes if you're comfortable or you can leave them open. You want to take three deep breaths. As you settle into a natural rhythm of the breath, you might hear sounds inside your room. You might hear sounds outside. These aren't distractions or not disruptions. It's simply what's happening around you. And we're still just gonna sit and breathe. You might begin to notice your mind as it wanders. It might be jumping from thought to thought. Again, you wanna gently guide your mind back to your breathing, focusing either on your stomach or your chest. As you breathe, you can feel them rise. And then as you breathe out, you can feel them fall. Just continue to keep breathing, observing what that sensation feels like. Notice the mind as it wanders, release that thought, and once again, returning your attention to the focus of your breath. Breathing in, following the breath in, breathing out, following the breath out. As the mind wanders, gently guide it back to the attention to your breath. Letting go of any expectations or judgments, just the kind of stress and anxiety from the day. We're just sitting and breathing. Breathing in, feeling your stomach rise. Breathing out, feeling the stomach fall. Learning to be comfortable in the stillness, knowing what it's like to just sit and breathe. Okay, now we're going to take our final 
three deep breaths. Okay, now slowly open your eyes, begin to move, stretch your body a little bit. All right, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Tiara, for leading us through that. I hope you guys enjoyed the meditation. If you didn't, that is totally okay. Well, this looks very different for everyone. But thank you again for joining us today, giving us some of your, your time on this Monday to learn more about the Wellness Center. And we hope that you've been able to kind of get an understanding of the programming and services that we offer. Um, you don't have to remember all of them. I know you get thrown a lot of information these days. So just come stop by, see, see what it's about. And you can follow our social media, which is on the slide at Duke Wellness, or you can go to students.duke.edu slash wellness slash. For more information, um, if you look up Duke Student Wellness Center, it'll come up too if you, if you missed that um, hyperlink. But we hope you had a wonderful evening and thank you again for coming and listening to us talk about the Wellness Center.